firstly, I will uh, tell you about our plan for today. We will start from formats and rules. Uh, I will tell you about uh, what you should do during the presentation, what you should not, uh, how you can answer questions uh, and about all the organizational details. Then we will make a small introduction so you can know us better. And then we'll start uh, our main part of the presentation. So we will speak about uh, uh, consulting case interview. In the first part, we will speak about the main parts of the consulting case interview and uh, the main aspects of this. And uh, in the second part, Amy will share with you some tips and tricks how to crack the interview so from his uh, career and from his experience in consulting. After this, we will make a question and answer session and I will tell you a little bit later more details on how you can answer questions. After this we will share with you uh, what can be your next steps to prepare for a uh, case interview and uh, to call, uh, for all application process in consulting companies and those who will stay with us till the end of the webinar will have some bonus materials. So uh, the duration of the webinar is going to be 90 minutes. Firstly, we will make a small introduction for five minutes. Then will be our main content presentation part for 30, 40 minutes. And then will be question and answer session for 30, 50 minutes. Uh, guys, please uh, mention that we have some rules. So please stay mute till the end, unless you are asked to speak by a moderator, so by me. And write your questions in the chat during the webinar, and you will be asked by a moderator to unmute and speak. And uh, uh, guys, please uh, remember about this, because we don't want to hear any noises, so please stay mute. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, on the uh, first bullet point that you should write the sign and uh, uh, Andre's name before the question. So I will see that you want to ask questions and make notes about this. And when uh, you will be asked by the moderator, please turn on the video and unmute. And so then you will introduce yourself and uh, ask your question. Also, I wanted to say that uh, we are really very thankful that you asked so uh, many questions to us when you filled the form. We tried to cover all of them during the presentation. Some of them uh, if they will not be covered. You can ask them during the question and answer session. And um, uh, you can also answer this question so you don't have to wait till the end. You can ask it already and probably will interrupt the presentation and uh, answer you on some questions at once. Okay, and let me introduce myself. My name is Alina and I will be a moderator today on this webinar. I work with Andre. I am his uh, client manager at Andrew Hamilenko Coaching and Consulting Group. And uh, Andre is our expert and career coach and mentor. He has a huge experience in consulting more than six years and he helped already for more than 50 clients to get uh, their offers in more than 20 countries. So Andre, please tell us a little bit more about yourself. Hi Alina, thank you very much for a really great introduction and I would like to uh, say welcome to every participant of the webinar. Simply just give me the five. I know that it's been a little bit challenge uh, uh, to host the webinars online, but uh, I just want to feel your energy in the chat. So therefore, um, if you like the webinar, please put the pluses in your, um, over the chat. Alina will check them all. So please ask your questions. We are here, we will spend this 90 minutes to deliver the maximum value for you and to help you in your, uh, with your challenges in, in your situation. So we are here to help you. Therefore, please feel free to ask your questions directly through the chat, and we are happy to answer all of your questions as much as uh, the time allows and deliver the value for you. So, uh, yeah, let me also maybe briefly introduce myself. Um, my name is Andre Homolenko. Um, I am a professional career coach and mentor. I've been, um, I started actually coaching back in 2013. Uh, it was part of my hobby because um, I always had a passion for helping people. And um, it all started with helping my friends. But also in the other 
trees. Um, I recommended them. I helped them to prepare. I coached them um, to crack all those interviews and to get into uh, their new jobs. And then uh, later on, I also, um, like a year ago, I founded my company, Andrew Hamalenko Coaching and Consulting Group. Um, I hired the team. We're currently a uh, quickly developing team uh, already of uh, seven people. And what we do, we basically we help students, MBAs, young professionals, as well as experienced hires to break into that exciting industry, into consulting. This is also due to the fact that I've been working as a consultant uh, for more than six years, uh, doing a great career starting from an intern and then ending up with a senior project manager. Career very fast. So I was on the so-called fast track to your career. Um, it's basically the normal motion cycles are about 24 months to get promoted to the next level and there was a period when with this which is considered to be extremely fast so in fact I became acting project manager just within 30 months while other peers of mine have took probably between four and six years to do the same and I want to Basically, I want you to leverage uh, fully from all this experience of mine and of my team in order to help you to get your job offers. So um, we will basically jump uh, into the content side uh, right away. And um, I just want to start with a quick introduction of the consulting interview process. So it has several stages. And um, so some of the companies have a pre-screening uh, quick HR call about your CV. It's like for 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depending on the company. Uh, for example, Eddie Kearney is doing this. And then uh, you move to the next uh, step, uh, which is the test assessment. Uh, then you have several rounds of the interviews, like first, second, and final round uh, of the interview, uh, they um, typically consist of one to three interviews in each round. And in some countries, all, uh, all of these interview rounds could be combined in just one day. So for example, in Germany or in other Central European countries, it's pretty common that you have the whole process not in separate interview rounds, but everything is taking place in sort of assessment center. Um, yeah, and then afterwards there is uh, the decision either to give you an offer or uh, you receive the feedback that you need to try again, basically, with a different company. And the focus of today's webinar is how to make you ready for the first, second, and final rounds of the interview. So what kind of methodologies you could use, and how you could basically prepare, practice, and then crack those interviews so that you will receive um, an offer at the end of the day. So um, each interview consists uh, typically of three parts, which is personal feed and behavioral part, then the case part, and then the questions uh, to the interviewer. Um, each interview uh, lasts between 45 to 60 minutes, uh, typically. And depending on the interview round, whether it's first, second, or final interview round, the proportion of time spent on the personal feed part and on the case part varies. So if, for example, in the, fir uh, in the first interview round, most of the time is spent on your uh, personal feed part, individual behavioral part uh, during the interview. Uh, so roughly, um, I would say 15 to 30 minutes could be spent um, on the personal feed part and your motivation. Then um, end case has only 15 minutes of the whole interview. So it's rather a small case, for example, a market sizing exercise. Then uh, moving on, the extent, um, the structure of the case 
cases become more complicated and um, uh, the case part takes more time. So uh, you, uh, uh, you, the personal fit part will be not uh, 15, 20 minutes, but it will be only five to 10 minutes just to, uh, to have a quick start. And then the case uh, will be uh, for the rest of the time for 20 or uh, 30, sometimes even 40 minutes um until you basically crack it and then you still have a chance to uh, answer the interview uh, to ask the interviewer some of the questions so let's now have a look into the personal feed part um it's basically it has four major pillars the first one is an introduction, then followed by the CV questions, motivational questions, as well as some behavioral uh, questions. So um, as for your introduction, I would like to provide you some tips and tricks how you could make your introduction really very impactful. So as for the introduction, uh, you could, uh, yeah, the ideal uh, thing is to pitch it uh, very quickly, like in 90 to 120 seconds, like one and a half to two minutes. You could maybe briefly introduce yourself and tell a quick story about your background, your current situation, uh, your goals basically, um, and linking it a little bit to why you want to go to consulting, why you want to join this company and why are you actually sitting here and why are you happy to speak to the interviewer. So by making this tailored presentation, this is like a good trigger for the further discussion for a livable conversation uh, with your counterpart. Then afterwards, um interviewer usually starts to ask you some questions either about your cv or about your motivation for consulting so um and this could be like i don't know why why did you uh, decide to do an mba or why did you want to study economics uh, or um, law um, etc um, so everything uh, regarding your previous background um, even uh, something about your hobbies or extracurricular interests. Everything which is written on your CV could be asked uh, into more detail to dig deeper really into your experience. Then uh, the next typical thing um, or what to ask in the motivational questions, uh, this could be uh, why, for example, why do you want to join consulting? Uh, why do you want to join this specific region? Um, why do you want to join this company? Uh, why do you do this and that? And I propose you to be very structured in your answers because structure is a key in all your, um, during the, uh, the entire interview. So you could use several frameworks, but the most simple one is, for example, I would like to join consulting for the three main reasons, namely reason one, blah, 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 reason two, blah, 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 reason three. And in this simple structures, when you frame your answers, uh, you could really succeed a lot and you could leave a very, very good impression. Here again is just a listing of uh, sort of personal fit questions, which you could be asked. So this could be like, what are your long-term goals or what would you like to achieve in five to 10 years from now? What do you think, what are your strong points? Or this could be also the questions which might put you in a little bit uncomfortable position. For example, what would your previous boss criticize about you? What are your weaknesses? Um, yeah, what are the things uh, which can put you under the pressure, etc. And for uh, you, basically, you need to practice all of these questions in order to be really very well prepared and deliver the best version of yourself 
uh, during the interview to leave the best possible impression. The next typical part of the personal feed part is related to so-called behavioral questions. Behavioral questions means uh, that the interviewer will ask you about some specific situations in your past and about your experience, as well as how would you behave yourself in specific situations. So just to give you a few examples of these kind of stories, uh, this could be like, what is your, maybe, can you provide me an example where you led a team or where you was able to show your leadership skills? This could be also um, something related to your teamwork, uh, something related to the conflict management, pro uh, problem solving, um, uh, or um, challenging situation, or uh, many firms also want to see how you could convince and how could you persuade um, others. Therefore, they would also ask you to show um, how you could argument and how could you um, lead and persuade um, in several situations. Or alternatively, especially now during the coronavirus, uh, one of the most frequently asked question is um, in the interviews is like, how would you behave if you could see that uh, you're a consultant and the partner is coming into the room but he's not wearing the mask and he is not actually want to do so how would you convince the partner like the uh, the top guy in the hierarchy um, to follow the general rules in order to see how would you behave in the situations which are not really comfortable for you uh, to put you out of your uh, comfort zone. Basically, general tip, uh, how would you, um, how you could answer all those behavioral questions in the best way. I would also recommend you to say, uh, to use the so-called star plus L framework. Uh, star plus L means that every situation, for example, if you are asked to uh, use your uh, to describe your leadership experience, then um, uh, your story consists of uh, uh, following five components, which is basically um, uh, S stays for the situation. So you begin your story with a quick description of the situation. For example, back in 2017, I was uh, exposed to, uh, to 30 million euros uh, project in the Middle East, which I needed to lead. And then uh, the task, so the objective was to deliver a multi-mobility platform uh, for the government of Dubai. Uh, and we also faced a lot of challenges because uh, of the high number of uh, stakeholders involved uh, in the game. Then next step, uh, number three, is description of your approach. So basically, um, how did you solve this problem? So um, here an example. Uh, my approach was uh, to get everyone on the same page because I really identified that there was a lack of alignment. So I spoke with vendor, I spoke with clients uh, in order to um, get everyone uh, on the same table and to make clear about uh, their, result, um, their objectives and results. And then uh, you describe the fourth thing is your the results or the outcomes of your uh, work as a leader. So the results were that we were able to deliver the solution and present and present it to the um, junior uh, to the prince of Dubai uh, during one famous exhibition, and it was a very successful story for for all of us. Um, and then, last but not least, please also emphasize on your learnings. Learnings is really key of every story. Uh, so, 
then you can say uh, while reflecting on this um, i understood that leadership has a lot of to do with empathy uh, empowerment and also alignment uh, with the key stakeholders so if you describe every situation along the star plus l framework and please remember always to express your learnings you will be sounding extremely structured and very convincing. So you will bring all the points uh, basically uh, through to your interviewer and you will be able to leave a very great uh, impression. Okay, so and just a general tip uh, for you, how, how should you treat all of these interviews? Um, imagine that you ha that your counterpart, that your interviewer is a celebrity, and this is a gift for you. Uh, so you have 45 to 60 minutes to speak with a person which is really famous in its field, which is an absolute expert, and you have a chance to learn something from this conversation, and you have this gift to speak to this person so for example i don't know for, uh, uh, for german guys uh, imagine if you were speaking to miss angela Merkel, uh, the counselor or to indian guys imagine that you were uh, speaking to mahatma gandhi um, or uh, examples like this or to mother teresa uh, or whatsoever like to really very very famous uh, guy or even if imagine <laughs> if you were speaking to trump or to other presidents of the united states and you have the audience or to the pope uh, whatsoever um, because this kind of attitude will obviously help you to succeed in the real interview. So show your genuine interest in that person. This is extremely helpful. Yeah, so this helped me a lot during my preparation, during my interviews to receive several job offers also. Uh, so we have covered so far the personal feed part, uh, consisting of the introduction, uh, CV motivational questions as well as behavioral part and now the second part uh, which is also extremely important is actually solving the cases and solving the problem so uh, I just want to explain to you what is the best way uh, the best process uh, if you can follow it to crack the cases for your upcoming case interviews so uh, it consists of uh, uh, six very simple steps and this you need to exhibit and exercise in every interview to follow these very concrete steps. So for example, the interviewer uh, gives you the case, so he basically he reads the question or he tells you uh, that question. Your first thing is you need to repeat the question in your own words and you need to make sure that you really understood it because if you understand it then it's already 50 percent of your uh, success the worst thing uh, which could happen to you is that you don't understand the case and that you are trying to um yeah fix uh, a different problem that's why after repeating the question it is critically important that you ask two to three uh, good clarifying questions in order to make sure that you really got the case objectives and that you know where you need to go with that case only afterwards only after you have asked the clarification questions and you are you have a good gut feeling that uh, you understand where you are heading only then you are starting to outline the structure to um, practice uh, to crack this case and then you are aligning the structure your approach 
with the interviewer. After the structure is aligned, you basically you go through um, through the structure and uh, go through the case, ask for information, states your hypothesis, checks hypothesis, analyze materials, uh, exhibits, do some calculations, math, summarizes your uh, results, etc. It's like proceeding bucket by bucket. And then afterwards, you summarize the solution and then prepare the recommendation and discuss it with an interviewer. So this is like the overall picture of the case solving part. And now let's dig deeper specifically into uh, every part of this uh, case. So how to start your case solving? As I mentioned before, repeat the question first and then ask the clarifying questions. So uh, usually not more than two or three. And I can also provide you good examples of what are the really good uh, questions uh, which you could ask for clarifications in order to get a better understanding of the objectives and also in order to set the proper basis before you will outline your approach. So, uh, one of the best question is, for example, um, try to understand better the business model of the company, especially if uh, you're if you don't know uh, the industry. So, if for example, if you are asked about something, something about fintech or oil and gas or pharmacy, um, but you have literally no idea about this business. Um, yeah, feel free to ask uh, about the business model, uh, how the company operates and makes money uh, in order that you understand the client situation uh, in more details. Then, secondly, ask about what are the specific objectives of the case? So. Uh, if, for example, if it's a profitability uh, problem uh, and the client wants to restore their profitability, asks, like, do they have any specific numbers? Uh, um, do, they, um, uh, do they have any specific goals? Like, for example, by how much should their profitability improve and by when? So what is the time frame also? Um, for example, the profits have been declining over the past five years by 25% and the client wants to restore the profitability. Then you can ask, okay, sounds great. So it seems like uh, the profitability has declined by 25% over the past five years and now our task is to restore the profitability. Do we have any specific number or objective by how much and when um, does our preferability needs to increase? Do you have any numbers or any further information to share with me? So this is kind of a question which you could ask during the interview. Okay, and then uh, last but not least, if you are maybe unclear about something specific in the case, uh, there were uh, some new information about you, for example, I don't know, I got a case uh, about Hyperloop uh, and assessment of the market potential uh, for the Hyperloop uh, in Germany and in the United Arab Emirates a few years back. And I, uh, to that time, I didn't even know a lot about the Hyperloop. So then you are Basically, you uh, could be encouraged uh, to ask uh, some more information, like what is Hyperloop? Uh, can you maybe tell me a little bit more about this technology? What is required to build a Hyperloop? Uh, how does it transport the people? Um, yeah, what is needed for its operations, uh, uh, etc. just to give me a better understanding. Just for you guys who don't know um, Hyperloop, uh, is basically a train which can levitate in in the vacuum tube. So I didn't know that before, uh, and that's why during the case I basically asked uh, the question to clarify because 
If you don't know what you are dealing with at the very beginning, you can only miss the target. Then you are then you have already lost. Uh, so therefore, it's extremely important that you set the proper base uh, already during um, the starting of the case. All right, I think that's enough uh, for the starting point. Then let's move on to the uh, structure. So the structure uh, should always be so-called MISI. MISI stays for mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive. Basically, it should cover all the components. I just want to uh, show you uh, uh, an example of the MISI structure. Uh, so it basically, it could look like this. Let us imagine that the case has uh, three buckets. Uh, one, two, three. Um, it's bucket one, two, and three. And then each bucket consists of several bullet points like uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, uh, etc. So, uh, what you could also do is whenever you have uh, taken a moment to outline your structure, uh, first of all, it's important just to ask maybe for 60 seconds uh, to, to make your thoughts and outline the structure based on the case understanding so that you can crack it. Then you present it to the interviewer. Then you show it, okay, in order to fix this case, I would like to focus, for example, on the three uh, components. First of all, on the company's performance, uh, its profitability, financials, etc. Then I would like to focus on the uh, market side um, to see the market volume, my, uh, market developments, uh, market segmentation and competition. And then I would also like to see, for example, to analyze our customers uh, in a little bit better way to try to segment them, uh, see their profitability, etc. Uh, so this is how you present the structure and by the way now when all the interviews are online it could also be a trick because uh, whenever you present this like this you will probably uh, bring the interviewer to a smile and laugh and basically you will raise positive feelings with him or her and this will give you another extra uh, points uh, in terms of uh, empathy and sympathy uh, from the interviewer standpoint, so it will make your life uh, easier. And in this way, you show that you are client friendly uh, in a way. So therefore, whenever you are doing the case uh, online, you could also show this picture like with your structure um, in the camera. And uh, yeah, uh, it always uh, works pretty well. Okay, so, um, yeah, then uh, whenever you, after you have outlined the question, uh, the structure, it always very important to get the buy-in from the interviewer before you proceed to the next stage. And this buy-in could be done uh, when you are asking uh, the two simple questions. So you show the structure after you have presented it, um, you ask, uh, like, uh, does this uh, structure make sense to you or maybe I'm missing anything? By asking this question, uh, you give the interviewer the chance to say yes, uh, whether he feels okay with your structure and he uh, or she approves it. But you also, in case you are missing any element and your structure is not missing or you forgot to uh, enter some element, you give the interviewer the chance to correct you. And maybe the interviewer will be so kind to, figure, to point out and mention that, all right, uh, but uh, I don't know, um, have you considered the regulations in your structure? And this might be uh, the fourth very important uh, point, which you probably have not uh, considered yet uh, to solve the case. So this is the first important question. And then the second important question is, um, like, do you have any preferences where, uh, on where shall I start with this structure? On bullet point one or two or three? 
because this is also very important. Sometimes the interviewer can give you the guidance. So if, for example, if you start with the second bucket, you will probably uh, progress with your case uh, faster uh, than if you were um, to start with the first uh, bucket as you initially intended. So um, just to sum up, outline the, uh, so take a moment to think about the structure, outline the structure, show it to your interviewer, walk, uh, walk him or her uh, through your structure and explaining what are you going to do. And then ask some clarifying questions for guidance. Like does your structure make sense? And whether uh, the interviewer has any preferences on where should you uh, stop. Afterwards, it's just um, it's important uh, that you solve your case bucket by bucket along the entire structure. Um, it's um, it's beneficial if you have any hypothesis uh, that you can state it um, or. Uh, but you are not obliged to state your hypothesis. In case you don't have um, a hypothesis, it's also fine. Uh, there are the ways how you could solve the case with or without the hypothesis. It's simply important that if you start with one bucket, you don't jump to the other bucket. Your approach is to go and analyze uh, the, prof, uh, the problem in more detail. So segment it and go deeper and deeper and try always to find what is the key problem. Uh, so what is triggering the problem in that specific bucket? Don't jump from bucket to bucket before you have fixed everything within one bucket. So your uh, goal is to get deeper, analyze, segment the data, and uh, find the structural problem, uh, which is the root causing problem, and afterwards uh, basically summarize all the outcomes. So after every bucket in your structure, you need to provide a summary, the results. So for example, um, we see that on the profitability case, uh, well, the 25% uh, uh, loss in our profitability over the past five years comes from the revenue stream. Uh, specifically, we have lost uh, uh, something like 17% of the most valued customers uh, in that period of time, and that's why our revenues have broken down uh, by, I don't know, 36% and we were not able to match uh, with the costs. That's why uh, our revenue, uh, our profitability has dropped by 25%, like for example. And after you have summarized the result of the first bucket, you say that, okay, now as we summarize the results of the first bucket, let's, uh, uh, let's proceed with the second bucket, with the market, and then, you do the same uh, with every other bucket. So you basically, you go deeper into the bucket, you segment it, you find the root causing problem, you do the calculations, analyze the data, you find what were, what were the reasons uh, for root causing problem, then you summarize the bucket, and then you say, okay, let's proceed to the next one. And then you simply repeat this activity for every bucket until you get to the very end. And then it's time for you to make a final recommendation. The good thing before making the final recommendation is just um, ask the question, uh, sorry, uh, just ask the, uh, the interviewer to give you another minute to prepare for this final recommendation so that you take a moment to structure your thoughts, summarize it, and then a perfect recommendation would be, uh, could be uh, through following the, fo uh, the uh, structure. So at the very beginning of your recommendation, you restate uh, the case question as well as case objectives. Afterwards, you formulate the brief recommendation 
uh, for uh, each uh, objective. You support it by three to five facts which you have figured out during the case. Then you also mention the potential risks and you outline afterwards the possible next steps. Afterwards, you conclude uh, with a very simple question to the interviewer, like, do you have any questions? And then you stay calm. In this way, you provide a very clearly structured uh, pitch regarding the final recommendation, and you give the interviewer the chance to step into the discussion with you afterwards. So just to give you an example, um, yeah, so um, the case was about uh, um, the bank losing its profitability and uh, what we have figured out is that uh, the bank was losing the customers, uh, the bank uh, also faced some severe regulations and um, uh, its uh, products were not comparable, uh, you know, were not matching to the uh, interest of the uh, customers. So what we propose is uh, to decrease the fees, to increase the uh, digitization offers in order to um, retain and uh, attract more uh, customers uh, and increase profitability by uh, Twenty-eight percent, and as well as uh, yeah, uh, uh, adapt um, and digitize our processes in order to make the bank more agile. While on the other hand, the potential risks could be A, B, C, D, E, and the potential next steps in order to proceed would be one, two, three, four, five. Like, do you have any questions so far? This is how you round up your recommendation in a quick. And then, last but, last but not least, uh, don't forget about it, uh, that by the end of every interview, you will also have a chance to ask some questions to the interviewer. So um, it's not only the monologue when the interviewer is asking you all of these questions, but also, uh, treat it as a dialogue. Now it's your time to ask uh, good questions uh, to the interviewer, to know him or her better as a person, to ask some good questions about the company, etc. So, and here I would like to, uh, to provide you some general recommendations regarding what are the good and what are the bad questions to ask uh, in the interview. So. I will start with don'ts because they are way shorter. So <laughs> I would generally not recommend you to ask very, very standardized questions. Like what is expected from me as a consultant? Uh, or if you could just give me one piece of advice, what it, would it be? The thing is that these kind of questions are asked by every interviewer. Uh, uh, sorry, by every candidate. And that's why it's just very boring uh, for the interviewer to answer all of these questions because he or she needs to do that like in every other interview. Uh, I can tell it to you from my own experience because I was extremely bored when candidates threw up uh, these kind of questions uh, to me. Um, I was just thinking, like, guy, don't you have you done your home task? Have you actually researched about consulting, about the requirements, about our firm? Uh, maybe you could um, have asked me um, a little bit better questions. Yeah, uh, and therefore, in order not to make the interview bored, but even maybe to show him interest, and also maybe to challenge him. I would generally recommend for every of you before the interview to research as much information as just possible about this company 
first of all, about its latest news, about its latest studies, publications, projects, whatever you could find online, on, uh, first of all, on their website, uh, like read most of the studies they have published uh, uh, over the past uh, one year, at least their exhibits, to understand what are the business challenges of their clients and what is really happening uh, in the company. Of course, it's always good if you could connect to some of the employees of this company to figure out even more about the company's culture and some insights and some specifics, which will help you to really ask very tailored questions so that the interviewer will really enjoy um, answering uh, these questions and maybe even uh, feel like being challenged a little bit. And then, of course, also research about this interviewer, his or her personality, his profile, publications, experience, as much as you can. Maybe you will read an interesting article uh, which, uh, which was written by the interviewer. And this in this way, you could ask very specific and very detailed questions related to, to the work, to the latest news about the company, and also try to connect to the interviewer as a person. So treat him at, uh, or her as a celebrity, and it's a gift for you uh, to speak here and now, so that you could really enjoy the whole show, the interview. Yeah, um, you can also ask about uh, what was his favorite projects which makes him proud even today. Like, make the interviewer feel great during the interview and you will be largely rewarded. I can promise you this. Okay, um, I think now it's time for the Q&A, Michael, right? Exactly. So uh, uh, after the Q&A session, we'll, uh, we will also share with you some uh, great gifts and also some uh, real life experiences from other consultants and other clients. So um, I, I would like to give to you back to Alina. Uh, yeah, uh, what kind of questions do we have in the chat? Okay, uh, first question we have, uh, sorry guys, if I will say some names not correctly, I will try to, uh, from uh, Ajaru uh, Hub, I'm not sure. Uh, I think you already covered it, but probably uh, you can uh, say answer this question. So please, uh, Ajaru, can you turn on the camera and introduce yourself and the question? Yes, hello. Hi. Hi, hello. Hi. <laughs> yes, uh, actually my question was regarding uh, when you said that uh, uh, you need to talk with someone, uh, you need to have his interest like when you're talking with someone um, very like Mother Teresa or Mahatma Gandhi, then you need to have understand and get his genuine interest. So what kind of questions would you ask in that case? Generally? But I think you answered some of them while uh, while doing the case studies, but I would also like to know what, other than that, uh, how, how do you gain his interest? Um, it's not only about what you ask, but how do you ask? Okay. Uh, Ajaru, uh, first of all, can you maybe briefly introduce yourself? so that we also yes. get to know each other. Um, um, so I'm an MBA student right now here in India, and uh, I have a work experience of three years working in automobile uh, background with uh, Yamaha Motors and Honda. And uh, uh, post my MBA, I'm interested into getting into strategic consulting. Um, the, uh, the field of uh, expertise, uh, I have not still decided. Uh, maybe automotive consulting or maybe uh, later on I would like to uh, go into strat uh, general strategies. So that is not yet decided, but yeah, this mm -hmm. is more about me. 
Okay, thank you, Ajuro. Uh, so I will just provide you an example. Imagine that you are the interviewer at uh, one of the strategy consulting firms and I'm just a young graduate um, coming from an MBA school. I would say like, hi, Ajuro, this is such a pleasure for me to speak to you. Thank you very much for that call. Um, you know, I have seen from your experience that you have already um, worked in the automotive uh, sector and I'm really Really so passionate about it. I also did a couple of internships uh, in for the automotive supplies and also at Daimler Benz. Um, and I know that the standards in automotive in Germany and in India are a little bit different, but the success story of Tata is so amazing on the global shape. Can you maybe share some of your experience? How 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 was the spirit uh, in Tata? and how were your years uh, in Tata? What really makes it out an outstanding company? So in this way, I would totally, um, I would totally affiliate to your personal experience. And then I would uh, try to make you feel proud. Like, um, by the way, uh, what do you think, what was the most challenging uh, project for you when you were at Tata? Um, uh, which maybe still makes you feel proud of accomplishing it even nowadays. Okay, so uh, I would also like to know how much deep would you go like, how would you like to um, cross question and uh, once, once an answer is given, would you like to cross question him again on the answer which is given or would you like to just, okay, say thank you and move on? I would basically suggest you to uh, dig deeper. So it's not about the number of questions, but it's about the quality of questions. Okay. And therefore, I would also recommend you to proceed um, to spend really time about getting the, um, yeah, uh, getting the deeper insights about the personality. So it's better to speak uh, with 10 people in more detail than with, with hundreds, uh, just, yeah, scratching on the surface. Okay. Does that make sense for you? Yeah, of course, I got uh, my point clear. Thank you. Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Uh, Alina, let's move on. Yes, and uh, next question was from Shalini Dave. Can you please uh, turn on uh, your microphone, the camera, and tell about yourself? Hi. Can you hear me? Hi, Shalini. But Hello. Yeah, I can hear you, but I can't see you, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm please? trying to uh, turn on my camera, but I don't know why it's not getting turned on. OK. Uh, Maybe you could also quickly introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shalini. I'm from India and I'm doing my MBA from HHL Leipzig in Germany. And I have approximately five years of work ex in SAP consulting and corporate strategy. And post my MBA, I would like to uh, join a, a strategy consulting firm. And my question is, um, I mean, it's a pretty basic question. So during a case interview, uh, should I do all the calculation mentally? I mean, it's a taboo to do the calculation using pen or paper or, I mean, how, 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 is, uh, how it works? Basically, uh, it's, um, um, hi Shalini, so first of all, glad to see you here. And um, it's pretty simple. Uh, I would not recommend you to use the calculator uh, during the online format, uh, but you could uh, feel free to use the mental math in terms of pen and paper uh, for your calculations. So you need to know about the basic uh, math, uh, how to, um, how to add, um, so plus, minus, uh, multiply, divide, uh, all these actions, uh, as well as percentages. And uh, whenever you are calculating, so for example, if you are having a, a market assessment exercise, so if you were asked uh, to assess what is the, I don't know, what is the market uh, of uh, uh, plastic bottle, um, uh, of plastic uh, bottles for water in Germany, then you first of all need to outline the structure and your approach. So what would be your logic of the calculation? Uh, 
and uh, only after you have aligned on the logic then proceed with the calculations so only then work with the numbers this is also one of the tips i wanted to give you okay. does that make sense yeah yeah definitely thank you for the answer and i have a follow-up question so uh, for example uh, if say i have laid down the structure and the logic and now i have proceeded uh, uh, while uh, doing the case interview. So um, while doing the calculation, say if I got stuck somewhere, and even though it's a very simple calculation, say 100 plus uh, 300, but I got stuck uh, while doing it mentally. And if I use pen and paper to write down 100 plus 300 equals to 400, will it negatively impact uh, uh, interview result? If you if you struggle during the interview, if you think that you are uh, going nowhere, then maybe it's just useful for you to uh, make a step back and to reflect, to summarize again what you have found so far, and then uh, to try to approach the problem from the different angle. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question, Shalini. Okay, and next question from Mayor. Mayor, can you please turn on your camera and introduce yourself and your question? Um, yes. Hello. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. Hi, my friend. I just want to thank you first for conducting um, this informative session. Thank you so much. Um, let me introduce myself first. So my name is Mayor Gaffer. I'm from Egypt. I've graduated one year ago, and I've actually worked for a consulting firm for six months. And um, yeah, that's that's basically it. My question is, when should, should we state our hypothesis? So before, like, stating the structure or the framework to the interviewer, or should we do it after, like, with the first bucket, introducing the first bucket? Um, hi, Major. Thank you very much for this question. Um, I'm also happy to see you here. Uh, there are different ways how you could... Uh, uh, when you could state your hypothesis. So first of all, uh, the basic thing is you can either state your hypothesis or you can also proceed without stating your hypothesis. Uh, second thing, in some of the cases you will not even uh, know your hypothesis because the cases are complicated or you are not very familiar with uh, with this business area to to give a hypothesis and then there is like not no right or wrong uh, when whenever you can state so uh, what I have seen from some of the candidates uh, that they have uh, structured uh, that they have stated the hypothesis even before outlining the structure or at the beginning of the outlining the structure. So for example, Omar Harp, uh, who is one of my clients, who is also attending this webinar and asking the questions. So he does this uh, or he tries to do that uh, before um, outlining the structure, which is good. I have also seen the other uh, candidates who have done uh, this after the structure um, or maybe even some candidates uh, who did this uh, uh, on the fly so while they were going throughout the case so there is no right or no uh, what is even more important is that in your mind you have a plan and that you basically follow this plan and that you communicate openly to the interviewer and that you think out loud. So uh, whenever, if you are brainstorming, um, for example, or if you are thinking about the approach, you can also express your thoughts loud. So it's always important that you communicate with an interviewer. It shouldn't be a monologue, it's a dialogue. And the more the interviewer is involved, the higher the chances are that he will basically buy your solution at the very end. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have one. Okay. All right. And the uh, next question is from Omar. 
Hello, Omar, and I'm on. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, Omar, I have just announced you. So maybe you could yeah. also introduce quickly yourself uh, to the other participants of the webinar. <laughs> Of course. So my name is Omar Harf. I graduated uh, from the American University of Beirut with a BA in civil engineering, and I've been working in civil engineering uh, for like a year now. Uh, for the past while, I've been uh, preparing with Andre and practicing uh, in order to get an offer in strategy consulting in the Middle East, uh, and that's it basically. Now, first off, Andre, really thank you for this uh, helpful and insightful session. I have uh, a question regarding time management during the case interview. So, how can you assess how much you should allocate time for each pocket or for each part of, uh, of the case? Because in some uh, situations, uh, a candidate might like get uh, really dive uh, deep into one of the pockets and run out of time before uh, tackling all the other factors. Mm -hmm. Okay, Omar, that's a very good question. Uh, I would generally recommend you to have uh, watches. Um, during the uh, case interview, and time management is a is a very important topic. Uh, so uh, your time management begins not in the case; it should begin at the beginning of the interview. So, for example, you know that you have an interview with uh, Strategy End or McKinsey, which will last, for example, forty-five or sixty minutes. Let's take an example of forty-five minutes. It means that if that's a first round interview, you will probably have something like 20 to 30 minutes, um, something in between for the personal fit part. And then you see, okay, so the interview has started at uh, 3 p.m. Lebanese time. Uh, then you see, okay, so I have the 20 minutes uh, until, so between 3 and 3.30, uh, 3.20, I have the time for all the personal feed, behavioral part, questions, etc. Uh, or maximum to uh, 3.30. So then afterwards, you have something like 15 uh, minutes to crack the overall case, which you will be given. And then you say, okay, now it's, for example, 3.20. So we started the case at 3.20. Uh, now I need to outline the uh, ask clarification questions outline the structure uh, and it shouldn't take m more than five minutes before i basically had up uh, with the case then i spent maybe uh, seven to ten minutes to crack this case then i need to be really very very fast because i need the two minutes two to three minutes to make the summary and then you can also ask the interviewer, shall I take this approach or this approach in, in order so that we have enough time to make this. So, and always try to plan a little bit buff, uh, buffer. So you need to have a look at your uh, clock from time to time so that you actually lead and manage this uh, interview. And then afterwards, don't forget that um, at the end of the interview, you will still uh, supposed to have th between three to seven minutes to ask the interviewer at least one question. So the better you do in the case, the more time you have uh, to actually ask the questions. Does that help for you? Yes, totally. Thank you so much. We will practice this in our next session so that yeah. it may. <laughs> I will make it work for you. <laughs> Of course, yeah. thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you, Omar. Uh, okay, Alina, who is next? Sorry, I didn't notice that it was off. Uh, yeah, so the next question is from Pierre. Can you please turn on your microphone and uh, camera and introduce yourself? Piyari, could you please unmute yourself? Because I can't hear you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so 
sorry about that. Uh, so my name is Nari, and I'm studying at the Middle East Technical University in Turkey. And I'm an undergraduate in psychology. And I'm graduating this year, and so I'm, I'm uh, targeting a couple of strategy consulting firms. And so my question was, I have a couple of informational interviews lined up uh, with uh, consultants at my target firms. And I wanted to ask what kind of questions you would recommend asking them if they would be similar to the, the ones that you recommend uh, during the case interview itself, or whether you have some specific advice about whether they Okay. Uh, so uh, what do you mean? I'm just looking. Uh, first of all, Piare, thank you very much uh, for attending the webinar. Can you maybe just specify what do you mean uh, by uh, informational interviews with consultants? So uh, essentially just uh, there are a couple of companies that I was looking at. So for example, McKinsey, right? And so I reached out to a couple of people said, you know, would they be willing to talk to me about the process or any advice that they have for me? And so I scheduled some, you know, 20 to 30 minute calls with them. Um, and so they're, and, and they range in, in seniority. So anywhere from, you know, associates to, to engagement managers who said they'd be happy to, to discuss, um, sort of their career or their path. Yeah, so first of all, make this people, uh, so first of all, uh, research heavily about them. You can research over LinkedIn, you can research uh, over the websites, you can read their studies, publications, whatever they post uh, online or kind of work they are doing. So ask them more about this specifically because this will show you that, uh, this will show them that you are not just the one of the crowd because they are receiving very many calls, but you will leave your yeah. impact. So this informal call is not about yourself, it's about themselves. So you need to make them feel proud about their accomplishment. And then after you have left your first impression, then uh, you could basically ask them for favors like sharing good advice which helped them to make the bar uh, when whenever they were uh, in your position a few years ago. Uh, so what could that be, uh, etc. And maybe you would be even able to connect them in such a good way that they would be able to refer you within the company or that they would be willing to have uh, have a second call, for example, with you, but they can provide you more actionable recommendations. And maybe even one of them would like to practice the uh, interview with you. Uh, if you want, I can, uh, I mean, um, I can give you uh, just even more tailored uh, tips. Uh, uh, maybe after the webinar, uh, whenever we have a chance to speak and get to know each other better. All right. That that would be wonderful. Thank you, and it's really this really helped. Yeah. Thanks for your answer. Yeah. Sure. All right, Gary. Thanks a lot, uh, Lena. Okay, and the uh, next question is from Zikria. Can you please turn on your camera and to ask a question? Uh, am I audible? Hi, Zikraya. Hi, five. Hello, Andre. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, good. So, Andre, these questions, uh, these guidelines, thank, firstly, thank you so much for this seminar. It was very useful for me. So, these guidelines and tips which you shared are for uh, people usually applying to consulting firms and whose interviews are sort of near, right? So, uh, I am a college student, a sophomore currently, majoring in uh, management sciences and data analytics uh, with a minor in finance. So do you have any advice and guidance from an aspiring consultant like him in college and in his sophomore year? Okay, so what are exactly your objectives? Uh, like any other uh, aspiring consultant to be a part of the big three consulting firms and management consulting consultancy. And can you tell me a little bit more about your current situation and when would you yeah. like to apply or how would you like to proceed? Yeah, so uh, currently I am uh, so much in consulting that I am currently leading an engagement team of five people doing idea validation and hypothesis testing for a feature in a client. 
and as of now i plan to apply straight away after my graduation which is two years two and a half years from now uh, in june 2023 so yeah um that's really cool that you have already visited our seminar uh, today because uh it will give you a lot of uh, cl um, clarity how to proceed so in your case I would first of all recommend you to focus on your academics already. I mean, you need to uh, have a very high GPA. You need to be top five, top ten percent of the class cohort in order to be eligible for the future to get into consulting. Um, then you could work, start working on networking with other people just for for the sake of future contacts. You can already invest in networking earlier. And uh, what is also very important, one tip for you is uh, try to arrange the internships in consulting as soon as possible. So uh, the objective uh, for you could be that during the, the next summer holidays, you can do an internship at one of the leading consulting firms. So, because this will be the first and the most critical uh, step for you, how to break through into that industry. I just want to share my story with you before actually applying into consulting. When I was a student at your age, I did something about five to six internships, uh, including also the one in <coughs> consulting. This is how I decided that consulting was the right thing for me. Does that make sense for you? Yeah, it, it does, it does. Thank you so much for the answer. Okay, yeah, sure, anytime. Uh, all right, cool, let's move on. Okay, we have a uh, last uh, question from Man Kriyao. Can you please uh, turn on your camera and introduce yourself? Hello, uh, hello. In my voice. Hi, man. Yes. Hello. Okay. First of all, I really want to thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. It's really helpful. Uh, honestly, it's very really helpful. Okay. And um, for sure. I'm back myself. Uh, I'm in China. I'm based in China. Um, I'm working as a approach to manager and BD manager uh, for a fintech company. And I have a uh, actually my work experience covers different industries. In, in past years, I've worked as an uh, engineer in automotive company and also worked in, uh, as a project leader uh, in education and uh, social network company. And the company I'm working as a uh, product manager and BD manager for FinTech. Um, and I started preparing my uh, case interview uh, half a year ago uh, because of my work and uh, uh, you know the situation from COVID 19 uh, at Post Wild. In the middle, so I kind of re, uh, restart the game uh, by preparing the cases. Uh, so my question is, yeah, is about the structure itself and also how to present the structure you know, in front of the interviewer uh, concisely. Um, I have more uh, probably the cases uh, with my uh, peers or partners and friends um, here. Then I really found it sometimes very challenging for me to you know uh, to prepare a comprehensive structure. Uh, and try to cover, uh, you know, as many as uh, factors as possible, uh, which have in my ma in my mind. Uh, then present in front of the interview concisely uh, within a few minutes. So I will give an example how it works. Um, uh, okay, and I'd like to approach the the problem uh, in three buckets. And my first bucket is on, on competition side. Uh, then I will look at a few factors on the competition. Uh, first is look at major competitor in the market and understand the market share and the, the, the uh, history of the shares in the past few years of the player in the market. The second uh, factor uh, on the competition is to understand uh, about the, uh, the new entrance in the market. Because I believe uh, to understand new entrance in the market, to help me understand um, about the market trend, uh, of this particular market industry, uh, but also the, you know, the future of the market. Then the third factor I want to understand about competition is about barriers. 
Um, this is an example of uh, how I present my structure in front of the interview, and I found it very challenging, though, know, to con concisely present it. Okay, I think I put talk too much. Uh, that's my question, mm -hmm. Bill. Sure okay. All right. Uh, hi, man. Hi, five. Yeah. So, first of all, uh, thank you very much for attending the webinar, and thank you very much for your question. Um, first of all, I just want to emphasize that there is no one fits it all solution in the cases. So you you actually you cannot use the same structure in every other case because the objectives uh, of the case are always different. So some could be profitability analysis, the others could be uh, market entry, the third one could be product launch, the fourth one could be M&A activity and mergers. So depending, you first of all, it's critically important that you ask the right clarification questions, that you figure out what are the specific objectives of the case and maybe you will even know the numbers. Uh, during the case. So, uh, based on your, um, based on the objectives of the case, you would then be able to um, drive a good structure for it. It might have uh, two, three, four, or even maybe five bucket points. The key thing is that you try to outline all of them on the first level of the structure. Uh, Min, can I ask you to uh, have a look into the camera because I just want to explain you something. So yeah. uh, you basically, you outline the first level of the structure and then you outline the second level of the structure. Like what are the sub bucket points um, for, for every uh, bucket? Like for example, bucket one consists of three further sub bucket. Uh, points or three bullet points basically so and then when whenever uh, how how do you present it concise this is what was you asking so you say that in order to do all of this I would like to focus on three criteria criteria one criteria two criteria three and um, then criteria one in criteria one I would like to focus on a b c in criteria two, I would like to uh, focus on D, E, F. And in criteria three, I would like to focus on uh, H, uh, I, J, uh, K, etc. So this is the so-called top-down pyramidal principle of communication, that you go basically level by level. You state the objectives, you state the level one, and then for level, uh, then for each packet, you present the bullet points. Okay. Yeah, okay. and if you need a more detailed question I, uh, or answer, I'm more than happy to answer it uh, uh, whenever we have a call um, individually afterwards uh, the webinar. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we have more. Is it um, helpful for you? It is. It is very helpful. The All right. Effect you present it very helpful thank you yeah sure okay all right um so i need to reallocate for my charger uh so yeah alina uh let's basically proceed uh, with the next question uh, the next uh, the last question for now uh, so we can move to another part of our presentation um yeah just a very general uh thing for you uh, all of the three parts of the preparation, they um, you need to invest a lot of time in order uh, to succeed in that. So you need a proper foundation. You need a proper practicing with each other or with experts. And you need to polish your uh, skills with experts uh, in order to make sure that you will basically uh, get the offers at the end uh, of the day and convert your interview invites into the full-time job offers. And with the proper foundation, you basically you need the right strategy and approach. You need to know how could you structure the hypothesis, uh, how could you uh, um, ask the right clarification uh, questions and how to proceed in all of this. Fundament is a really key for your future success. 
and um, just I have figured out this information um, at one of the platforms that uh, I heard that uh, the one session with a coach could really replace this 20 hours of a self uh, preparation and gives you the guarantee of uh, higher and better results uh, with a better understanding of the whole process. So today in that webinar, I tried to explain and do all my best in order for to create you a better understanding of the whole interview mechanics. So, um, how can I basically help you um, in all of this process? I just wanted to make it clear to you that I provide the support along the entire application process. So today, we only focused purely on passing the interviews, but um, what I do is, a, all-round solution basically from setting the right objectives uh, going through CV and cover letter polishing then helping you with networking in order to arrange your interview invites especially given the nowadays the COVID times and the pandemic when the recruiting is a little bit slower the importance of networking is really becoming critical in order to make you and help you to get your uh, interview invites. And then, of course, preparing for the interviews, going through the first, second, and final round until you get the offer. And then I also help you to make the right decision. Um, what is more coherent with your goals? And how could you, in what kind of company, what kind of culture, industry, uh, etc you could benefit mostly of it and then i have also developed last but not least the program which is called get ready for the first 100 days and long term career success this program is for those who have already received their offers where i will share all my experience which helped me to get the two promotions within the shortest time frame possible and will help you to build a solid foundation um, of, of your future career. So I just wanted to share with you my personal story. How did I prepare uh, for my interviews uh, like 10 years ago? You know, like 10 years ago, there were no, uh, yeah, there were not that many materials uh, basically for you to uh, prepare for a consulting, not as nowadays. Um, and therefore, I struggled really a lot. So I spent three months, three months on my own, practicing every day, or almost every day, maybe six days per week, for seven to ten hours to crack all of these cases. And I cracked so many of them. I basically, I only counted 150. And afterwards, I simply stopped counting. So I cannot tell you how, how many cases I actually uh, done in my past, because after 150 cases solved, I basically I stopped counting. So <laughs> I don't know how many cases there are needs to be done. Uh, but you don't need to do all of that uh, work because you can basically fully benefit from all my experience uh, in order to reach your goals. And so far, uh, me and our company, we have helped more than 50 clients over the past 12 months to get their offers. And I only have two KPIs to measure the success of our work. First of all, it is the number of the offers you get as the result of our collaboration. And second of all, it's your happiness rate. I want to keep you happy. I want you to succeed. And I want you uh, to master that challenge uh, as many others have done. All right, let's, uh, let's maybe uh, yeah, talk a little bit about uh, our references. So, and uh, I will share with you a couple of our stories. I don't have one fits it all approach. I actually, at the very beginning, I want to establish long lasting and trust, uh, trustful relationship with every member, or with every client. That's why I want to better understand your uh, specific background, your current situation, your objectives, and of course, what are the challenges you are facing on your way uh, while applying. 
All of this will help me to build a solid foundation for our relationships. Uh, first of all, to set the proper base, to set the right objectives, like what are the firms you want to go to apply, what are the regions, what are the positions, and how um, every one of us could leverage um, the networking. So uh, what kind of network do you have? Uh, to whom can you reach out? what kind of network I have in your region um, and how we can work together, uh, what kind of instruments and uh, how can we use our referral strategy in order to help you to get through the inter uh, to get the interview invites. So this is the major step as well as prepare your crafted CV and cover letters so your documents in order to make sure that uh, you have an outstanding profile and that the companies are actually really willing to speak to you. And then let's, uh, we will move on into the preparation for the first, second, final interview rounds. And what we will do, we will basically simulate the entire interview experience with you. So. Um, you can imagine this as a role game, as if you were, um, as if, uh, for example, uh, Zikria or Shalini uh, or Mank uh, or uh, Piyari or Omar, if you were having an interview with a company of your choice, let it be McKinsey, uh, Roland Barber, BCG or any other firm, I would be playing the interviewer, you would be playing yourself, and we will simulate the entire interview experience. So starting from the introduction, uh, CV motivational questions, behavioral questions, what we talk about at the very beginning of the webinar, then the cases themselves, and then your questions to me as an interviewer. So we will naturally simulate this environment, and afterwards, we will switch to the coaching session. So, and in the coaching session, we will talk to you about the following three things. So, first of all, you will share your uh, experience and your observations, what went well and what was not that good. Afterwards, I will uh, give you my feedback, and then we will conclude with uh, specific recommendations on what you can improve in your performance uh, in all parts of the interview in order to make you more uh, familiar with the interview process, to make you more confident, to make you more structured, to communicate better, to improve your behavior, and to improve all your uh, case cracking skills. So basically, everything which you will be assessed upon during the real interview. And I will provide you with tips, tricks, frameworks, um, and deepest insights how you could make this happen. So that you will see a very great progress from session to session, you will increasingly improve, and then the interview comes and you simply go there and get the offers. And that's the entire logic. I would like to share with you a few examples of the stories. Um, Omar and uh, Shibangi and uh, also some other guys in that uh, uh, webinar uh, who are already my clients, uh, they, they knew some of these news because um, I have uh, uh, a lot of news to share. So uh, three mentees of mine have actually started their positions in consulting um, uh, in the last time. So uh, two of them started positions in Germany and one in London. And uh, I was very pleased to experience that yesterday and day before yesterday, two of my uh, mentees have actually got the offers from Roland Berger um, Middle East, um, as well as Oliver Wyman and Arthur DeLille. Uh, and all of these offers are worth more than 100,000 euros or USD. Um, so dollars uh, in tax free, so it's uh, really great. And I'm extremely happy for um, every of my clients and this 
this is basically the reason why I'm doing this, because I'm so passionate about your results. And I know that many of you are struggling with this market environment. And my mission is to simply help you and to give something back. So that's why I am extremely happy, actually, whenever I get the message like, hey, Andre, I just got an offer from, I don't know, McKinsey, PCG, Roland Berger, Strategy Ant, Oliver Wyman, A.D. Kearney, uh, or any boutique firm or whatsoever. Thank you very much for your support. This is really energizes me. This is my true passion and uh, yeah, I, I really love uh, this and I really love to help uh, my people, my clients. And I would also like to welcome one special uh, guest. So uh, uh, Shivangi um, is also attending this webinar. And Shivangi is uh, my uh, current client, um, also working, um, uh, we work uh, together as well as uh, with Omar. So Shivangi, hi, how are you doing? Hi, Andre. Uh, I hope I'm audible to everybody, right? Thanks, everybody, for joining. And uh, uh, thanks, Andre, for conducting this webinar. Again, super comprehensive. Uh, really good to see all those pointers and you know recollect okay this is something that I need to do uh, so uh, uh, thanks everybody for joining and uh, I'll quickly introduce myself I'm Shivangi Singh I'm from India I have uh, just completed my MBA from uh, the UK and I have been working with Andre since the past uh, few weeks I think three weeks or so um, on uh, the entire process we have had some uh, interviews together and it's been really good uh, the best thing for me that is going on right now is there's so much data around us uh, in times of covid like everybody is trying to uh, extract the right things i have been practicing cases with other uh, mba students and other people in general uh, but the way andre has uh, solved cases with me it has given me good clarity because he actually knows what works and what does not work. And a fellow student can never really understand that. And uh, the best thing that I feel is uh, moving forward would be to build muscle for a real interview, real case interview, because in the actual interview, we will be um, facing a real consultant. And Andre is exactly that. So I think it's going to be very comfortable for me when I actually face the interviews in coming weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Omar, maybe you could also join us with uh, Shivangi for a while. And uh, I just actually, I wanted to, to, yeah, to ask you guys, how do you like our group sessions so far? Is that helpful for you? Yes, Shivangi, would you like to go first? Omar yeah. is a real gentleman. <laughs> yeah. He always asks me to go first. Yeah, so the best thing uh, I like about the group sessions is that you solve two uh, cases. You, you solve two cases uh, in one setting. It builds muscle for understanding uh, things from an observer perspective as well. How the interview looks like and how another person performs and the mistakes of another person, the good things of another person. So the group sessions are uh, definitely a very big part of uh, on race services. And uh, yes, I mean, I am learning a lot from Omar as well and uh, on race feedback. And of course, uh, Omar also gives me feedback when I uh, do the interview with Andre and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, such unique points come from a fellow mate. So that's the real, uh, you know, uh, point of learning for me. Now, Omar, I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I totally agree with everything that uh, Shivangi said. Like, uh, you get to solve two cases. Uh, you get to have uh, this observer perspective where you can, like, uh, know what an interviewer is looking at with, uh, with any candidate, what uh, are uh, their weak spots uh, where they can do better. 
uh, in addition to that, with respect to working with Andre, so from my opinion, case interviews are uh, like creating a habit. And if you create the long habit, the wrong habit, you find a, you like struggle with overcoming that. So uh, I believe that if you start with the coach and specifically with Andre early on, uh, you would be able to create uh, like what's uh, really the right path to move through. And in addition to that, no matter how you think you are prepared, uh, like you helped me uh, find out weak spots that I have and work on that. And uh, I think that we have improved a lot since we have started this session. All right, cool. Um, and uh, what I actually like, uh, especially with you guys, uh, is that you also not only during the group sessions, but in our Q&A weekly calls, you also share the news, you, you give the updates, you try to help to each other. So um, it's a really cool team spirit that you are creating. So um, yeah, I'm very uh, thankful for you uh, for being part of it and also um, Thanks uh, that you are attending this webinar. Uh, I found your questions, Omar, is still very interesting. Um, and I'm really happy to uh, go along this journey together with you to bring you the offers uh, in the Middle East for you, Omar, or in UK or Germany for you, Shivangi. Basically, yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this. All right, cool. And then uh, let's maybe uh, also just uh, recap. I just want to give you uh, some special gifts, uh, guys. And thanks for staying with us uh, uh, for such a long time. I know we are already running a little bit out of time, but I hope that the content and the energy is extremely valuable uh, for you as well as the insights. So after this presentation, after this webinar, you will receive an email from uh, Alina, our client manager, uh, where you will have a brief uh, presentation of the webinar. You can also check it and go through all the links uh, to, to check for further materials. Uh, we will also share the three case books for you to arrange your proper preparation to set up the base. So this will be the case book from London Business School. This will be the uh, case classics books from uh, Case in Point by Casentino. Um, as well as uh, McKinsey case book on the interview dynamics so that uh, the guys like Homer <laughs> could better manage their time during the interview because it exactly explains what you need to do minute by minute in the interview and what differentiates good performance from bad performance. Yeah, so um, these materials. Plus, you will also get the examples of the perfect CV uh, and cover letters, uh, like the guidelines with my commands and instructions. And then, uh, we will also uh, kindly ask you to help us to improve even forward. We value very much your uh, participation and your energy and your questions. So therefore, I would kindly ask you to uh, uh, leave your feedback uh, to mention all the points which you liked during the webinar to answer all the questions um, in that quick uh, form in order for us to help you to deliver even more value uh, the next time. So therefore, I'm really looking towards to uh, your comments and I'm very thankful for your participation. And as a special gift, uh, uh, my team and I uh, are offering you a free uh, 30 minutes consultation call, uh, either with me or with our experts, uh, in order so that we can have a look together at your specific situation, uh, your um, background, um, your objectives, and maybe the challenges you are currently facing, so that I could answer all of your questions and we could basically help you and move you uh, further um, and make it closer for you to receive uh, your dream uh, consulting offer. So um, I want to invest further my time uh, in you guys in order to make you really successful and help you 
uh, to build a great career. Yeah, um, I think that's uh, pretty much about it. And on the next page, you will also find uh, my contact details. I would kindly ask you, if that's not yet the case, uh, to join my uh, to join me over the social networks, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, or Xing. Uh, for for the it's like a German LinkedIn. So uh, to follow me and to send me a friend request uh, on all these uh, networks, I'm happy to stay in touch and I'm happy to, to help you and then you could also leave your feedback and uh, visit our website to find even more information uh, which is useful for you as well as book the first appointment um, yeah, with uh, one of the members of our team. And herewith I think we are coming to the end. Um, I would like to really thank you, every one of you, uh, for joining us uh, today. It has been such a pleasure to have all of you here to uh, have a livable discussion with you, to deliver the content and to answer all of your questions. And I'm really happy to uh, stay in touch with you and to help you on your uh, way. Thank you very much.